things up here. <laughs> all right, we're uh, good now. We're going to yeah, cut this go first ahead. part out. All right. All right, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio, and it's a pleasure uh, of mine, and I know Charlie's too, today to have on the phone one of the true legends in this business, and that's Ricky Morton. Uh, Ricky's been around for, for a long time. He's worked uh, for the NWA and WCW and, and every uh, uh, promotion in between. He's been a champion everywhere he's been. He's been a multi-time tag team champion with his uh, partner, uh, Robert Gibson, and other partners, too. And, uh, and uh, one, of the, one of the my favorite memories about Ricky Morton is one of the matches he had with Flair in one of the big uh, early pay-per-views there where, uh, where they just tore the house down. They were in a baseball stadium, and hopefully I can get Ricky to tell me a little bit about that. But right now, Welcome to the program, uh, Ricky Morton. Ricky, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm fine. Why are you talking there? I guess I'm from the olden days, I believe, huh? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, brother. And that, oh, and, guys, it's, no, I'm doing great. Matter uh, of fact, buddy. Uh, well, uh, we're just we're, coming to town right now. Fix to get ready to wrestle tonight. You know, uh, I still wrestle four or five nights a week, buddy. Yeah, and that's the thing I wanted to bring up, Ricky. Uh, you and I had talked uh, in the pre-interview segment, and you were telling me about all the stuff you got going. And uh, you just got date after date after date lined up, and 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 to, and to me, Ricky, that speaks to the just how much people still love you and uh, still respect you, yeah. and and still just remember how you know what all the all the great stuff you've done over your career, and and that and that speak vol- you know speaks volumes about what all you have done in this business and what you still mean to this business, and uh, I think it's just great to still have you around and still have you healthy, man, and and tell tell the fans a little bit about what you do have going on currently in your in your career. Well, what what I got going on is you know. And it's, sometimes it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, but, you know, professional wrestling is the only thing I know of. Yeah. I did it all my life. You know, my dad was a professional wrestler. He went to a referee. I did it all my – you know, wrestling's all I know. But yeah. you got to understand, you know, I, I'm 54 years old. Oh, wow, I didn't even realize I, that. I'm still in better shape, as good a shape as I was when I was 20 years old. Yeah. I, you know, I just just got older. But, but I still enjoy what I do. I still love – my business, yeah. uh, I still love performing. Uh, like I said, I, I still wrestle four or five nights a week. And the reason I'm still, still active is because on the independent circuit, especially down south, you know, I'm still a good draw for these people. Sure, so, uh, absolutely. And when I do come to town and when I do, you know, you say it. To me, if, it, if there's five people or there's 5,000 people, I'm still, you know, perform the same you know right. so that's what i do you know when i come into town i try to do things to put butts in seats yeah that's what it's about and and when you do that you know you stay booked a lot buddy sure absolutely and and like i said people people still just, just still you know still love you and still think the world of you and and you are still a draw everywhere you go which to you know and, and, and you mentioned about being healthy and, and being uh, back in shape and i i we talked ricky was in town uh a couple of weeks ago for the big uh, benefit we did down here in Lawrence. And uh, and I made it a point, Ricky, to tell you just how great you do look, man. I mean, you've really gotten yourself in that gym. And, and you look you do, you do look better than you did when you were 20, bro. And how, how are you doing that? Get, <laughs> well, buddy, I appreciate that. You know, you got to understand, I didn't know for a while. Uh, and I don't mind telling people. Uh, I had a virus in my blood, which I don't know. I guess this year I got up to eating like fast food. Yeah. And I had this virus in my blood for like four years that I didn't even know it. Wow. That my body got immune to. And when it got immune to what I was doing, I was losing my blood. And, and, I, and by the time I went to the doctor, I only had like half my blood in my body. Wow. And, uh, and then when I went to, you know, I stayed in the hospital like seven days. And then when I... They figured out what's wrong with me. I come out, it's just like I was a whole different person. I felt like I was 15 years old again. Sure. You know, yeah, I, I'm sure. Sick like, after being sick like that and, you know, not being able to breathe, you know, I, I didn't know what was wrong with me. And and what it was is when they, you know, uh, put the antibiotics into my blood and gave me a blood transfusion, it was just like a, when I come out of the hospital, I was just like a whole different person. Yeah. And, you know, and, I, and it you know, like I said again, I feel like I'm 15 years old again, man. <laughs> well, well, that's great, and it certainly certainly shows in in your work and everything like that, and all the stuff you're doing in the ring right now. Uh, you, you're at a show right now, aren't you, Ricky? 
Yes, I sure am. I'm uh, in Sugar Grove, North Carolina right now. <laughs> That's something else. Don't ask me where it's at. I don't <laughs> it's, it's somewhere <laughs> over the river and through the woods. Yeah, huh? here, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just a thrill to have you on the show, Ricky. And we were talking earlier uh, about your uh, NWA days and, and all that. And let's, let's, let's go way back, Ricky. Let, tell, tell, us, tell the fans and me uh, what, what actually got you in the business. Had you always been a fan? Uh, or, or is it something you were kind of brought into? How did you get started? No, but I'm from a wrestling family. Uh, okay. My dad was a professional wrestler. He was, uh, well, first of all, my dad was a, a drill instructor, Marine Corps. And you got to understand the life that I live with, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, get your foot out my ass, sir. <laughs> sure. uh, but that's the only way that we was able to talk. Was I all right with saying that? <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Y'all can beep it, can't you? Yeah, we, we, can, we can cut stuff out if we need to. <laughs> oh, okay. But I, I, what I'm trying to say is, no, I grew up. My dad was great. He's still alive too. Uh, but no, but he was a ref. He, he was a wrestler. Then a referee. Matter of fact, if you go back to the early days and watch the old Memphis wrestling, when I first broke into business, you see my dad refereeing a lot of the matches. He was Paul Morton. Uh, oh wow! You know he was a ball headed referee. He had all the tattoos over. You could tell he was out of the service. But uh, but you know I started there, and you know guys were one of the greatest experiences in my life. That's what the guys today. They have missed out on because yeah. you know back then you had territories right. of wrestling instead of having like one big major corporation like Vince McMahon. Sure, yeah. Uh, you know you had different territories like Florida, Tennessee, Alabama, you know Oklahoma, Texas. So you know I was a young kid. I started out there in Nashville, Tennessee. Then I went to Memphis for Jerry Jarrett, but I had a great opportunity to see because then you wrestled every night. Yeah, and then when you had to learn, you had to. Run, wrestled some of the greatest wrestlers in the world, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. and by the time that advanced up to go to other territories, you know, I was already a good work you know, the day the guys today and I ain't trying to be mean, I ain't trying to No, say what you gotta say, like brother. You're you, or nothing, but you, see, you've earned the right to say what you want to say. <laughs> see you know, a lot of guys don't even understand what this wrestling business is even about. Right. You know. I wrestling business is about making money. It's about putting people in the seats. It's about entertaining, about, you know, having a match and telling these guys stories, you know. It's, right. See, they don't understand when I come to town, this is not a Saturday night hobby for me. Right. You know, this is not something that, uh, you know, that I look, dude, this is what, how I feed my family. This is how, you know, I put, I pay my bills, sure. you know, by professional wrestling. These guys don't really understand this, and they don't. You know, it's like I, I go to some of these towns that, that I book. And you got to, you know, and it's, it, it's so easy if, if you just do it right, you know. Right. Uh, they, these guys, they run these towns, they draw, what, draw eight people yeah. a week, you know. And or if they draw eight people a week, and it, I don't make no excuses for anything. It's just, you know, you, you ain't got what the people want to see. You know, if you got what they want to see, they'll come and see it. Sure. Yeah. But see, these guys don't know what they're doing. They go out there, they see somebody do a move on Monday Night Raw, and yeah. here you go, they got to, you know, and then you go to the show, and every match does it. Yeah. See, so and, and the business has changed so much, but that's where I started out to get back to what you asked me. Boy, you got me on the road here. <laughs> but I'll go back, you know, to, to uh, you know, I was brought up in a wrestling family. Yeah. I was lucky, you know. Then I went to Memphis where, you know, where Jerry Lawler. Yeah. You know, and uh, Bill Dundee, and you know, matter of fact, that's where all the great wrestlers come from sure. out of the Memphis area. Absolutely. And you know, I was one of the fortunate ones to be in there while I was a young kid to learn what I learned. Right. Yeah. Okay. And and so you worked out there for those guys, and and uh, is that where you met Robert? Uh, well, no, I met Robert. I, I was friends. You know, I'm, I'm older than Robert. You know, and I was friends with uh, Robert's older brother, Ricky. Gibson, which Ricky is uh, dead now. Oh, he passed away. But you got to understand that what we were, uh, what we were doing. I got my phone blowing up here, guys. <laughs> but what, okay. I, what we was doing yeah. is, uh, you know, when I was first in Memphis, I, you know, I wrestled there by myself. And I went to Oklahoma, and like you were saying earlier, I had other partners. Yeah, you know, and then when you know, I left and went to another territory for a while. Mm. I took it, me and Eddie Gilbert was partners. And when I came back to Memphis, you know, and you got me, I was a fortunate place because at the time, 
Jerry Lawler broke his leg. Yeah. And Bill Dundee caught hepatitis. Oh, wow. So I, I was in the spot where they needed a baby face. Yeah. And they had this big, bad guy, big black man named Sonny King. But, it, I mean, he was somebody else. <laughs> and I, and they did the thing where I went out on TV as a young guy fighting this big guy. Yeah. And showed the people that, you know, that I would fight him. And they did the thing where they turned Sonny baby face and made him, him the tag team partners. Don't get me wrong. Now, we didn't break records in attendance, but yeah. we kept the territory going. Gotcha. Until Lawler and Dundee came back. To get back, sure. And, Ricky, uh, Ricky, let me hold you up right there. We're up on a break here, and uh, we'll pick it up right there when we come back. Uh, more Inside Wrestling Radio with Mick, Ricky Morton coming up next. <laughs> 